When we talked a couple weeks ago, you said, yes. you know what, I feel pretty good right now, but I feel like when fight week comes around, I'm going to freak out a little bit. So, yep, of course. Freaking out? Yeah, freak outs always happen. <laughs> no, but, um, you know, it, it's it's more so the weight cut, you know, when you're low on calories mm -hmm. and low on water intake and everything. But so far, I think I've managed it pretty well. haven't had crazy freak outs. More of my freak outs are, happen via social media. When I get like stupid messages or stupid text messages and everything, that's when I'm like, ah. You haven't learned from us media people to never read the comments. Right? right, yeah, and a lot of them are from my friends who know how I am, week up, and they're still like, hey, how do you watch it? How are you feeling? Are you ready? I'm like, yeah. no, I'm not ready. I need another month to prepare. Uh, like, so uh, how are you feeling? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> How's the weight cut going? Uh, what was different over the last two weeks as you, as you built up to it? I mean, was it just a matter of making sure that the weight was dialed in and, and you knew what kind of opponents to prepare for already and, and so everything was kind of smooth sailing? Yeah, it was weeks. very smooth sailing this past couple of weeks. You know, I, that's why I had the time to go out to Mohegan Sun to promote. My camp mm -hmm. was, was really good. I had a solid camp. Uh, we prepared really well for, for the rematch and yeah, everything was good. My weight was good. So yeah, it, it was just a matter of keeping, just managing the weight, making sure I don't get crazy out in Mohegan at the casino. What's uh, your method kind of to stay grounded and stay relaxed and not think about the prospects of fighting for a title so often? What's that been like for you? What do you do to, to just chill? Um, so pretty much I, I enjoy doing media. You know, I, I like to be distracted the week of the fight. So any opportunity I get to, to do media or promote the fight, then I'm there. Um, you know, I'm one of those fighters. I do enjoy being on social media and looking at my phone mm -hmm. and everything. So I kind of do that to keep my mind off of the, off of the fight itself. Because when I start personally, when I start thinking about the fight, I get inside my head. I start, you know, having self doubts and everything. So that's what I do. Just just stay distracted. Have you bumped into her yet at all this week? Have you had a chance? No. To see her? no. I I mean I I walked past her briefly, um, but she was signing posters, so I didn't get a chance to say hi. But I did say hi to her coaches when I saw them in the I mean, dining this, hall. This is like a weird, there's no like bad blood or anything no. like that. You told me this is the fight you would have asked for. You thought she deserved it. Yeah. Else, so. Yeah, absolutely. And and me and Emily were actually really cool. You know, um, uh, we've always been really supportive of each other. There's no bad blood on either end. And so yeah, I. If I do see her, I'm going to say hi, obviously, but I, I just haven't had the opportunity yet. If you beat her, that's 2-0 and against her. It sort of rules out, at least for a while, the, the thoughts of like another fight with her yep. down the road. So who else do you... I know you have to obviously beat her on, on Friday, and yeah. that's all you're thinking of, but yep. who else do you kind of have on the radar screen for, for after that? Um, you know, there's a fight coming up in December, I believe, on the Italy card or one of, one of the European... on the Europe tour. Um, and I believe it's between Valerie Letourneau and Kate Jackson. And I would think that on paper, um, they would be kind of the next, uh, they would get the next title shot. Uh, but that's just uh, strictly off of paper. You know, they're veterans, they're uh, big names that were signed. So, um, so uh, you know, they're, uh, all, a lot of girls are on, on my radar, but obviously, you know, I'm thinking about Friday. Yeah, you told me two weeks ago also that you know, you feel like you really need to get a finish in this fight. Yeah. But that said, if, you, if you're not able to get it, if it goes later into the fourth and fifth, what's been the preparation uh, like for that, G given that training to go five rounds in practice is a lot different than, than when it comes down to it on a fight night? Yeah, and that's exactly right. But I have an amazing team that has been preparing me this entire time. Uh, Bill Crawford, he's behind you guys. He was the one that was holding mitts today. He's my strength and conditioning coach and my striking coach. And so, you know, he's the mastermind behind everything that puts together our camps. And, um, you know, if he thinks I'm ready, then I'm totally ready. I trust everything he says. Even if I'm like, I'm not, he's like, no, yes, you are. I've been tracking your progress this whole time. You're ready. So, um, yeah, I feel confident. It, you know, of course, ideally, I'd like to get the finish and get it over with as soon as possible. But I am, I would be grateful if it does go five rounds because it shows that I can do it. I can do the five rounds, you know, and that's, that's exactly how my Bellator debut was. I was nervous because it was my first time doing five minute rounds and I didn't know if I had the gas tank and it went all three rounds. So I was grateful for the experience. So it would be the same story if that ends up happening on Friday. Alamale, you said you like to do media, you enjoy mm -hmm. doing that, and especially during fight week. How much intentionality is behind your media appearances with, with marketing yourself, with putting yourself out there and kind of, you know, making yourself appealing to the masses? Um, you know, it, 
it's very important actually and what a lot of people don't realize is that it's not just the fight it's not just your fighting ability it's actually I always say it's 50% fighting it's 50% business you know you need to market yourself you need to build your brand you need to get the followers more follower more followers more fans means you know more viewers more opportunity you have to get booked on certain cards um, more sponsorships opportunities so um, yeah, I think it's really important, and that's why I, I've totally embraced this, you know. I think it's a really cool experience, and and it could be over tomorrow, you know. That's why I'm I'm totally fine with, with the marketing side of everything, the PR, the media. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy it all. Well, hopefully not tomorrow, but <laughs> after Friday. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> no, not tomorrow. <laughs> you, uh, you care to give a, a pick on the other title fight that's right after yours on Friday night? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've had a chance to spend time with both of them uh, since we've been out here in Pennsylvania, and they're both really awesome guys. Uh, truth be told, though, I actually don't follow men's MMA very much, so I cannot. The only fight I've actually watched was Linton's fight, and I think it was because we were on the same card. Um, but I can't name you like any of, of Ryan's fights. Um, but with that said, I actually am probably going to be going with uh, Linton and, and you know we, we are managed by the same um, management company we have the same sponsors so it's like we have that little that little team thing going on um, so I'll probably be rooting for him but both guys are super cool I, I've been doing um, interviews and and uh, hanging out in the workout room with with Ryan you know so they're, they're a really cool team as well so I don't, yeah but let's go Linton I guess thanks <laughs> we're good Thanks, guys. Cool. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you.